The third method that the appraiser could use is called the income approach. The income approach, and it is used on investment property. It is based solely on the amount of income that a property generates. It's based on the present value of future income. How much money is this property going to earn me over the next several years? So the income approach is always using investment grade property. Now, before we get into this, we need to go over and do some basic accounting work. So let's go back over here, clear this out, and understand that we got to talk about some basic accounting principles to begin with. So the first thing is this thing called gross operating income. Now, Remember that this appraisal can be done on other property than just houses, especially when we start getting into the income approach. It could be a four unit house. It could be a 12 unit apartment complex that they're appraising. Could be a strip center. It could be an office building. So understand that when I talk about the gross operating income, this is the sum of all of the income that can be generated. So think about all of the sum of the income. What income do you have? Well, the first one that everybody thinks about, obviously is the most common, is you've got rental income. And most people just stop there. No, there's a whole bunch of other income. Maybe you rent out the clubhouse in this apartment complex. So you may have other clubhouse fees. Maybe that apartment complex has pool pass fees. Maybe that other income has uh, Coke machines. So you've got Coke machine that you split with, or you've got laundry income. Or you've got late fees for people that pay their fees late. Or you've got um, upgrade fees. And I know that we've all seen apartment complexes where, you know, it's $500 a month, but you want a covered parking spot, add another $100 a month. So all of these are potential incomes. They would all be calculated in this gross income. Gross means what? All, total. So you've got to figure them all in there. Now from this gross, they subtract this thing called debt, um, vacancy and credit loss. I love doing the commercial stuff, because these people just make up terms that mean nothing. Vacancy and credit loss. Basically, what they're telling you here is, look, you own a 12-unit apartment complex. Not all 12 units are rented 100% of the time. That would be the vacancy part in there. And even if there are people in it, maybe one of them's not paying. That's the credit loss. So a lot of appraisers will figure in, hey, you tell me you got a 12 unit apartment complex. I don't believe that it's 100% rented and that everybody's paying all the time. So typically they use a percentage and the common is five to 10% of the gross income, all right? You made a million dollars, 100,000 we're gonna subtract as vacancy and credit loss because about 10% of the time is a, a property vacant or somebody not paying. So when you subtract this vacancy and credit loss, 
you get this thing called effective operating income. Yeah, because that's truly what it is. All right. Effective operating income. Now, in the accounting world, we actually have to then subtract from this group all of the expenses And if you've owned investment property or you thought about owning investment property, you understand that you get to subtract. Hey, I had to buy glass cleaner to clean all the windows in my rental. That's an expense. I had to put an ad in the local newspaper. That's an expense. I had to hire a lawn care. That's an expense. I had to hire an attorney to evict somebody. That's an expense. So we would total all of those expenses to get this term here. And then when you subtract your gr uh, gross or effective gross and you subtract the expenses, what you are left with is this thing called net operating income. This, my friends, is a generic looking accounting. If you have a job it follows the same pattern, right? Because you get your gross pay. Hey, I went to work. So last year I got a gross pay and that gross pay included my base pay. It included overtime and vacation. So it would be the sum of all that pay. Well, I had three days that were sick. So they subtracted that credit loss and I had this new effective gross income. But from that gross pay, they had to subtract taxes. They subtracted my health care. They subtracted uh, stuff where I bought safety equipment. And what I took home was my net pay. That's the paycheck that you actually walked home with. So this equation holds true in just about every basic accounting formula that you and I are going to use and that the appraiser would use as well. Now, one thing that does not count in the expense, and once again, here's another example of these people just using made up terms to make you feel better. Now from your net, you would subtract this thing called debt service. Well, that's a real big fancy word for what? The mortgage payment on that property. The key thing I want you to understand is debt service is not counted in the expenses because it's not required. You chose to get a mortgage. Remember, it was a equitable, voluntary, specific lien or just voluntary specific because you chose to. So you don't, or we don't, or the appraiser don't figure that into the expenses. And the same is true with you. When you get home with your net pay, you then pay your mortgage payment out of your net pay. And what you are left with is this thing called cash flow. This is the money that's in your pocket that you get to go to the casino with or go out on the hot date with that new girlfriend, whatever. But this equation is something you need to understand. We have a summation of all of the income called gross operating income. Well, because it's not 100%, we subtract the vacancy factor and get an effective operating income. Then we subtract all of the things that were required to run that property. Advertising, legal, uh, contracting, maintenance, payroll, all of that. And that would give us net operating income. Then from our net, we subtract the debt service and get cash flow. We are going to see this equation again in another chapter. So make sure you understand this. Now, I needed to tell you all of that so we could get to this. 
because the appraiser is going to do this third method called the income method. And here's what they are going to do. They're going to estimate the gross income. That's what we talked about. They're going to deduct that vacancy and rental loss or credit loss. And then they are going to sum up all the expenses. But remember, expenses don't include capital uh, debt service, the mortgage payment. It also does not include this other thing that I didn't touch on, capital expenditures. So what you might do is take some money out and go, hey, look, I, I know I'm going to put a roof on in 10 years. So I'm going to take out $2,000 every year and put it in this other account. So that in 10 years, I will have money stored away. That's called capital improvement fund. That does not, that's not an expense either. They don't deal with it a lot on the exam. And then he is going to use what is left to determine a value. The most common value that they use is this thing that we colloquial call a cap rate or capitalization rate. Basically, the capitalization rate is the percentage return between what you paid for the property and what you actually earn on the property. So if you had $100,000 and you walked into your bank and said, hey, I want to buy a certificate of deposit with this hundred grand, what are you paying on interest? And they say, well, we'll pay you 3% interest. That interest is a cap rate. You know that on that 100,000, if they're paying a cap rate of 3%, you will earn $3,000 that year in income. That is how the cap rate works. However, the problem that we have is we are actually trying to figure the value. That's what the appraiser is doing. So it's a slight modification of that formula. We took the value, i.e. in that example, 100,000. We multiplied it by the cap rate to get uh, the income. That's this version of it. But unfortunately, the appraiser is doing the other. So you have to do some algebra to realize that to get a value, to get the value, which is what the appraiser is trying to find, he has to take the net operating income and divide it by the cap rate. Now, as an appraiser, this no longer is a very simple thing because the cap rate, you guys cannot figure as beginners. It takes an appraiser 10 years to get into commercial appraising. That 10 years, he is going to learn over his education and uh, seniority that a cap rate in Tennessee, uh, even Nashville, Tennessee, for a single tenant on a 30-year lease is 6.8 to 7. You can't figure that. So the good thing is, and I'm smiling, is the cap rate on the exam will be given to you because there's no way you know it. You can't know it. You don't know. You know, is it single tenant, multi-tenant? How much time's left on the lease? Is it uh, net? We haven't got into those. Is it a triple net lease? Is it a gross lease? But the appraiser will know. And once he gets all of this information, the math to figure the calculation of the value literally can be done like that. The hard part in this is getting all of this information from the seller. And they will ask for tax returns. They will ask for all kinds of supporting documents because what the appraiser is going to do is figure the net operating income 
and he is going to know the cap rate and he literally can do the evaluation in one step. So if we said, oh, look, the net operating income on this building was $800,000. And let's just take the shortcut and trust me on this right now. And this particular building in this math equation, he is going to tell you is an 8% cap rate. It will be given to you. The equation or the math question that will say, using a cap rate of 8%, how much is the v value of the building knowing the NOI is $800,000? Well, NOI is 800. Cap rate is 8%. Do not mess this up because you have to do it in the decimal fashion. 8%. remember, is 0 0.08. Then all you need to simply do is pull out your handy dandy calculator. Hey, Siri, what is 800,000 divided by 0 0.08? That's a big number. Ta-da! One math problem. We know that that value of that building, based upon the fact it's earning $800,000 a year, is a $10 million building. So the other way to look at this is if you walked into a bank and said, hey, I have $10 million. I want to buy a certificate of deposit. What are you paying in interest? And they said, well, we're paying 8% which is a huge number, by the way, then you're going to know 8% of 10 million means every year I earn $800,000. That would be my net money. So the example here is in a cap rate, you actually use the net operating income. I would suggest that you do the math problems down here or the math problems in the back of your book to make sure you get used to being able to calculate the net operating income. You would take the gross minus the vacancy minus the expenses, okay? There is a second, oh, cap rates are typically used for like retail stores office complexes, maybe warehouses, 